most important thing, our ability to be able to, to build our teams and lead them towards doing a lot of things that we need to get done in this wonderful, wonderful company. But uh, unlike last year, I brought some reinforcement this time. Please give a big hand to Gabe Norwood. <laughs> Later on, he's going to give uh, his thoughts on... on... <laughs> Excited, eh? <laughs> He just wants to meet uh, Mr. Seppo first. <laughs> Second oldest pala. Uh, he's going to give his thoughts on, on the value of playing a team sport, of taking ownership, of uh, collaboration and commitment, and eventually being able to reach your full potential. Which I hope you all know is your leadership principles, right? Yes. yes? Okay, dapat yun. Alam na alam yun. But before anything else, I don't know if you remember last year I said leadership is hard and I don't know why anyone wants to be a leader. It's uh, lonely, it's, it's stress-filled, it's pressure-packed. Diba sa Pilipinas, pag nanalo yung team, magaling yung players. Pag natalo yung team, tanga ng coach. Diba? It's always the coach's fault. And still, some of us take on that mantle of leadership. It's so much so that uh, I have tried, uh, I have come to term it Really, tayong mga leaders, those of us who want to lead and continue leading, really, may konti tayong sapit sa utak. Like the, 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 the crazy ones. Why are we ever going to do it again? And I, like I told you before, I had uh, retired from Gilas after 2014. Uh, remember the game that I showed you last year? Yes. Sino kalaban? Oh, yeah. At win got us to the World Championships. So to this afternoon, we're going to go next to the World Championships. We're going to watch the game after uh, the competition in the World Cup after that, those Asian Championships. Uh, after that World Cup tournament, I had again retired from, from Gilas, but in, uh, in uh, late 2016, they asked me back. And again, people are asking, why do you do it? And that's why I believe sometimes this, this thing that we do as coaches is really a... Uh, 
a job for uh, people who are not really of very sane thinking, the crazy ones. Uh, allow me to play our first video. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. I'm sure you're very familiar with uh, the guy who, who said those words, of course, uh, that was uh, Bill, uh, Steve Jobs. And um, a lot of times, if you think about it, what we do as leaders really is kind of bordering on, on insanity. Why do we always subject ourselves to this kind of pressure, uh, this kind of responsibility? But I hope everyone in this room, you're coming in as leaders, regardless of your position, title, or responsibility in this great organization, you're coming in to truly make a mark and, and do something special, do something different, not only here in Azurion, but in Azurion, but with our lives. And in the end, I think that's what life is all about. We go through uh, this, this uh, our daily routines because we want to do something of significance, something special, something sometimes truly as crazy as being able to change the world or, or change something. That's where we're coming from. Um, in the story of Gilas, you will find that we have changed Philippine basketball from what it was in the past where every Philippine team player would find every excuse not to be part of Gilas. Every Philippine team player, every PBA player would find every excuse not to be called up to the national team. But now it's completely flipped and I think Gabe will attest to that by saying now every Filipino, not only in the PBA, but even in high school, in college, they all want to be part of Gilas. We have truly done something special. We have truly changed the, the Philippine basketball world. But before I get ahead of myself, allow me to give a, a few thoughts on, on uh, the discussion this afternoon, and that's going to be really about coaching. And when I speak of coaching, I always want to start from with this first question. Best way to think about how to, to be a good coach yourself is to think back to who is your coach. I think it's a good question to ask ourselves and to appreciate um, the efforts uh, of that person on whom you, to, you rely, to, you owe your being here to. Sino ba talaga? Pag tinanong ka ng, when you're asked this question, who is your coach? I want you to think about it for a while and answer that question. You don't have to say it here out loud, but to yourself, just remember who is your coach. What did that person do to, to uh, deserve being called your coach or your mentor or the one person most responsible for being where you are today? And I think that's very, very important. And hopefully we try to emulate uh, that person and more importantly try to uh, do justice to that person's memory by being the best coach possible. My starting point always when I talk about coaching is that we have to remember it delivers achievement, fulfillment, and joy. And it always has to show up in the bottom line. A lot of companies are doing a lot of coaching programs and it's not because it's the latest fad or it's USO or it's the, you know, the, the, the newest thing, but it's because we want I want all our coaching efforts to show up in the company's bottom line. It delivers fulfillment, 
achievement and joy from which your people and ultimately the organization benefit. Um, last year, when I spoke here, we talked a little bit about building our teams and about leadership. This year, I thought to be able to step up as a continue, continuation from last year's discussion to talk a little bit about what my thoughts are on being able to coach and being the best coach possible. And I believe that these three components are always interlinked. Think about it. Learning without achievement exhausts energy. Achievement without learning becomes boring, and the absence of joy erodes the human spirit. The result, the, the cause of all burnout in organizations. And you see this all the time, very successful executives. They've been very good at what they do for 10, 15 years, and suddenly one day they wake up and they say, what am I doing here? Why am I still doing this? And why am I suddenly nawawala ng gana sa kanilang ginagawa? When this happens, chances are one of those three things is absent from their work. There is no achievement, there is no uh, learning, and there is no joy. And so, and so there has been the absence of joy. As coaches, this is what we do. We facilitate. We facilitate our people, that our people's learning. We allow them to achieve things. And in so doing, we give joy to their work. And when they love what they're doing, they have joy in their work, we give joy to their lives as well. In the hundreds of definitions of coaching, for me, this is the most effective. Simplest, easiest to remember. Coaching is face-to-face -face leadership. It is the art of facilitating the performance, learning, and development of another. There are those three items again. Those three things that are interlinked. Performance, learning, development of another. If we're going to ask yourself as a coach, as a leader here at Azure York, what do you do? Very simple. I facilitate the performance, learning, and development of my people. That's why uh, we don't have to be really an expert at, at a certain field or a certain line of work to be able to, to be a good coach. Our job is to facilitate the performance, learning, development of our people. And I, I hope you also appreciate the fact that it is face-to-face -face leadership. Face-to-face -face leadership. And uh, that I think in this, in this uh, context, it's very, very important. There's a really great book by uh, Richardson on sales coaching that says, priority number one for all coaches in organizations is to transition from being a manager or a boss to a coach. Your structure, your DO, your table of organization says boss, but the relationship has to be one of coach and coachee. Think about it. Management without coaching is like a sports team with a manager, but without a coach. Again, if you are just a manager and you are not able to coach, you are woefully inefficient in today's modern organization. You can have the best manager, you can have Manny Pangilinan as your team owner or team manager, but until he got Chot Reyes as his coach, he never won a championship. When, when Token Text, when, when the MVP group of companies bought the Token Text team, the PLDT, they got into the PBA and they had like, uh, they went for seven years uh, and won a grand total of one championship. That seven years, they had like eight different coaches. Uh, so you could see there's already a problem in, in that scenario. They were changing coaches very, very often. Finally, uh, we, we, we had an opportunity to work together. And the first thing I said is you've got to commit to your coach. Where if, whether you, you have to give him a, a few years, you have to give him a few conferences, he's got to be able to do his job. And that's why it's very, very important, dear managers, dear bosses, dear team leads, not only to look at yourselves as a managers, but to start thinking of yourselves as coaches. The model the, is soft where it needs to be on people, but it is hard on accountability and measurement. If we had a whole coaching workshop, we could uh, go deeper into these concepts, but I just want to say that uh, a lot of people are saying, well, coaching, the relationship, those are soft skills, the fuzzy, you know, mushy st st uh, stuff. That's not important. 
it might be it might be soft on the people side but it is very very hard on accountability and measurement when you talk about taking ownership in your leadership principles accountability is what you're talking about having said that as a as a foundation we are going to recall again our team model trust execution accountability motivation that's what we're going to talk about in greater detail as we uh, go through this entire uh, 30 minutes uh, of, of this talk before sending you over to game okay remember dear managers it all begins with you it is not hr's job it is not management's job it is not your boss's job it all begins with you the responsibility is in your hands and i hope that we are able to start with this very important perspective this is the starting point every single one of you in this room you've got to take this responsibility you have to understand it you have to accept it it is really in your hands using coaching to help your people be responsible for their own development Let's keep it there first because I want you to think about it because this thing called coaching, this thing called leadership, like I said, it's not easy. It has to start with you. And the starting point of all great leadership, the starting point of all great teamwork, as I said last year, is trust. Job number one for all managers is to build strong, trust-based relationships with your people. Remember, I said that was one of the first things I said last year to build strong, trust-based relationships with your people. Trust delivers a different return. We call it the ROR, the return on relationships. Let's talk about trust a little bit more. And I want to just be able to explain what we mean by trust. Trust doesn't mean I'm going to leave my phone here and I'm going to trust that you're not going to steal it or I'm going to leave my wallet there and I'm going to trust that you're not going to steal it. That, that's not really the trust that we are referring to. The trust we refer to is vulnerability. We've got to be authentic. We have to be vulnerable. Nothing kills trust quicker than the Superman theory of leadership. Alam niyo yung Superman theory of leadership? The theory that says, I am the boss, this is what we should do, this is how we should do it. Nothing kills trust quicker than that leadership model. Instead, you say, I am your boss, I am your leader, I don't have all the answers and I need your help. To be able to stand in front of your people to say that I think is a very powerful uh, starting point for any leader. To be authentic, to be real. Parang yung commercial ni Piolo Pascual sa Sprite, di ba? Sabi ni Piolo, Boss, magpakatotoo ka. Magpakatotoo ka. The starting point of all great leadership, of all great coaching in this relationship building based on trust is vulnerability. We've got to be uh, not scared to be ourselves, to be authentic, to be vulnerable. And that's what delivers that return on relationship. The key ingredient to building trust, it is not time, it is courage. The key ingredient to building trust, it is not time, but courage. Like I told you before, when you trust people, you open yourselves up to the possibility of that trust getting thrown right back at your face. When you trust people, you open yourselves to the possibility of that trust being betrayed. And still we trust. And that's why it takes an inordinate amount of courage to trust people. The courage I refer to is the courage to step out of your comfort zone and this is at this point that we're going to discuss the one of the most important things to creating coaching relationships for leaders for coaches you've all heard that that phrase before diba? don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone you've heard that before yeah sobrang gas gas that's almost cliche and dami nagsasabi no don't be afraid to stretch your comfort zone don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone but that phrase is kulang the complete phrase is, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone, but remain true to your gift. Or don't be afraid to stretch your comfort zone, but 
Stay within your gift zone. That's a phrase from John Maxwell. What does 